Hello learners, I am Pradeep Nayak, CEO of Fuel India. I welcome you all to the wonderful world of events. Today we are going to talk about growth and scope of event industry. Well, I have been in this industry for a little more than 15 years and I have seen a tremendous growth in this industry. I have seen the hardships in the industry. I have seen uh, the challenges that industry faced, uh, the difficulties that industry has overgrown to and uh, to what it is today. Today in the year 2020, we are uh, looking at international platforms. We're looking at global platforms and many other opportunity. But when I started 15 years back, the scene was completely different. It was still in the nascent stage, but yes, there were a lot of players already existing in the market. And there were some events happening, but yes, there were very few events that was happening as per the international standards. But now with a lot of investments, a lot of corporates and a lot of companies moving their base to India, a lot of multinationals who have set up uh, their offices and uh, their factories in India and many other uh, countries who have invested through FDI and other uh, norms of government in India and India being one of the most, uh, one of the fastest growing uh, country amongst uh, uh, other countries in the world uh, has kind of catch the attention of all the countries across the globe. Also the government which has been doing work for the last uh, eight to 10 years, they have uh, reached out to the global economy, um, making India as one of the major uh, contributor to the economy and uh, drawing all the attention. I'm sure uh, in various uh, news um, related to finance and other articles you would have read about that. But let me just touch upon as to what uh, scope uh, would uh, be there for the event industry and what is the amount of growth that we have seen. Um, I have some facts and figures that I have to share with you. Uh, for that, allow me to show the presentation. As I mentioned, the topic of the day, growth and scope of event industry. This are some images of the different types of events that we do. So, as I mentioned, uh, event management is looked upon as the sunrise industry in the service sector. Well, yes, our industry comes under the service sector. Well, there are different uh, services, could be housekeeping, could be HR, uh, functioning finance, and many other things which come under service industry. And event as an industry has been seen, has been seen as the sunrise sector. There are, reason, there are two reasons, okay? Now, 10 years back, there wasn't any formal education format for events, okay? Um, so what happened is that like, for example, for HR, there is BBHR, BBMHR, etc. They have many courses. For finance, you have CA, you have BCom, MCom and many other. So for different types of services that come under service sector, there is some or the other vocational or any kind of a formal education format. But for event industry as such, there wasn't anything of that format. I think till at least till 2010. In last 10 years, things have picked up. A lot of institutions have started specialized courses. They have uh, PG diploma courses. They have diploma courses. They have specialization in uh, the graduation program. They have specialization in uh, the you know master's program. So that's how it is seen as a sunrise industry. The reason being, it came without any uh, strong uh, background. It just came out as a people skill industry. But now with a lot of formal education, it has got more organized and even better. The industry, which was at 5,631 crore in 2016-17, overall has been growing at 16% CAGR, even overtaking the Indian media and entertainment industry, which is growing at 11.30. So in terms of our turnover, it might not be as much as the media and entertainment industry, but in terms of the growth rate that we have, no, we have like, we've been doing 16% CAGR, like if there was a stock option, I would say with the event industry, that's an awesome return that you can expect. Uh, well, compared to 11 to 13% in media and entertainment event. Uh, industry. Now, this 5,631 crores way back in 2016-17, we are talking about an organized sector. Companies which are private limited, companies which is LLP, companies which is a proprietorship, companies which are registered, companies probably through service tax or through GST, they are registered and they are showing their numbers in terms of transaction or doing turnovers, which is completely with corporates or which is done completely in an uh, official way. Well, this would be just 60% because the equal amount of 40% which is completely or 50% to 40% which is unorganized sector. This, as I mentioned, our industry started as a skilled, uh, as a people skill industry where people uh, gain skill by working in uh, event industry and then they rose up to creating their own companies or creating production houses. So what happened is a lot of people still, 40 to 50% as I would say, even today, 
that they are still under unorganized in the sense um, they would invest and uh, they would rent out things uh, for sometimes it would be pure cash transaction sometimes it would be uh, a bill transaction so many other and a lot of people might not have registered or a lot of people are below the uh, transaction of 20 to 30 lakhs a year so you will find a lot i mean when i say lot it's like thousands of companies so an equal amount i would say would be there in an unorganized sector so this report was put together by uh, Ernst and Young uh, for EMA, that is Events and Entertainment Management Association. That's where we got this data from. So they have been actively looking. So Ernst and Young being such a uh, big uh, financial uh, company looking uh, towards event industry and their growth rate. So they have predicted that uh, event industry as an industry would grow beyond a 10,000 crore mark in 2020, 2021. That is this uh, financial year that we'll be looking up to as I make this video. So that is the growth rate. So just imagine 5,631 crores in 1617, exactly five years from there, we are looking at double. Look at the CAG, I'd like no, um, I think this is one of the most promising industry that can uh, give you that kind of returns. But that the reason uh, being, uh, the amount of growth that is happening, as I told, a lot of corporates coming into India, a lot of uh, brands that are coming into India, that is their global. And most importantly, people in India who have got this exposure, who have done, gone to uh, different countries, done these courses, have brought all those things to India and are expanding. Like uh, if there were 10 companies who were used to do events abroad uh, way back in 2009, today we have 200 companies who are doing such uh, things. Uh, before, I would say there is only 100 uh, destination weddings used to happen. And today there is 100 destination weddings that happen every month. So that is the scale that is increased too. Um, also, a report by Allied Market Research it also says that uh, the global the global event industry stands at 1,100 billion in 2018, and it is also expected to grow at 10.3. On a global level, it is growing at 10.3 percent because there are a lot of countries that come under it, like close to 140, 150 countries that come under the global uh, readings that they're going to do. And they expect this to go to 2,330 billion by 2026. That is another eight years from 2018. That is 2020 that we are looking into right now. It might be another five to six years. But look at this size, $2,330 billion industry. That's the size. That's the size. And I'm sure India will be one of the major contributors to that number. Now, let me just show you a graph, which is uh, for India. This is uh, put together by Ernst and Young. So in way back in 2011, if you see, we were at 2,800 crores. And we grew up on a close to... 15% uh, CAGR from there, 3,248, then 3,700, and 4,208, and then 6,610, and then now we are predicting 2021 because um, 18, 19, some uh, I think EY reports are yet to be uh, submitted. So once we see that, we'll get the detail. But this is what is predicted. It's going to be a huge jump, and the CAGR is going to be much, much higher there. So this is what I'm trying to say in terms of numbers and graphs. Um, giving you a clear statistics as to how our industry is growing at a very fast pace. Now, industry overview. The largest segment, now you might be seeing 10,000 crores. So what is happening in our 10,000? Who are the contributors for the 10,000 crores? So the largest segment still says that 90% comes under managed events. Managed events in the sense, for example, our company, Fuel India, or could be Wiscraft, or could be any other company who are managing event for the client. So a client could be anybody, could be HP, could be uh, Biocon, could be uh, Government of India, Government of Karnataka, or Government of uh, uh, Maharashtra, or anything. So we are managing event for them. So 90% of still the 10,000 crores is formed, what we are predicting is by managed events. And only 10% is IPS and activation. That, well, they are seeing it since 2013. But what I see is that all of a sudden, in the last three, four years, I'm talking about since 2016, 17, the pace at which the IPS are picking up, I think no country is going to match the kind of IPS that we are going to produce. And the second industry which is picking up rapidly is sports. Look at the kind of sports that have come to India in the last four years. Hockey league, we have very premier uh, badminton premier league, we have we have rugby tournaments, we have NBA that has come to India, we have power boat racing that has come to India. So there are multiple formats of sports which was not a part of India has come to India and they are all dependent upon big level of big scale events. So sports event, um, uh, under event, the sports category takes off at a very, very fast pace as much as 18% per annum growth. That is what people are looking at and people are looking at specialized. 
So if you see a small graph that I've uh, put up on uh, the right hand side, so uh, the activations is uh, what we talk about activations, for example, the mall activation or the road shows, et cetera, et cetera, that is coming down slightly, the sampling and all those things which come under regular activations. And at the same time, the digital events are picking up. Because thanks to our government, uh, we are, the digital India campaign, so uh, they are trying to reach out uh, to the rural uh, through a different, uh, so every uh, household I think today has a smartphone and uh, people are uh, seeing a lot of content uh, through their smartphone. So uh, all the events now have a, a kind of have a digital intervention to it, uh, whether it's a concert, whether it is a, a show or an award function, will have some kind of a digital intervention or an, or an overlap. So that's why digital events have picked up drastically and managed events up there. But IP, as you see, intellectual property is growing. Though there is a small percentage of IPs produced in India, but the revenue contribution is huge. So if you see, because, uh, for example, Sunburn is an IP, uh, India Bike Week is an IP, uh, we look at many, the India Kids Fashion Week is an IP, Entertainment Show is an IP, uh, Social Nation is an IP. So each IP, the scale, the one IP might be creating a huge turnover. So the percentage of IPs that are happening compared to the managed events is very, very less. But in terms of, uh, say, uh, if you see here, managed events are 56%, but the revenue they contribute is 53%. But intellectual property, IPs, is there to 2% of the events that are happening in India, but it is contributing 17% of our event industry revenue. So look at that uh, scope. I would uh, uh, definitely... Um, be more than happy to see that you know, growing to 10% uh, in terms of uh, intellectual property and the profit growing there to like 37, 38, 40%. That's a great number that we can look at. I'm sure um, a lot of you might be thinking right now, like uh, why is Pradeep talking about all these numbers? We still haven't gotten into the event industry. Uh, like, the reason why I'm talking about numbers is to give you an insight before you uh, take your decision of getting into this industry and you already taken, I guess, uh, that's why you're doing this course. But uh, before uh, you get into a professional uh, environment, you should know what you're getting into. Gives you a clear picture as to what our industry today is and what it can be in future. And the scope. Here are the opportunities that I would want to discuss with you. So this will help uh, to make your decision uh, even more concrete and uh, to give you a more clear picture about your future. Specialization in the sector. So what has happened now because of a lot of event and the types of events that have entered India. So what happens is that uh, before there is to be one company who does everything. He does weddings, he does everything. So social events, uh, we do sporting event, we do corporate event, we do birthday parties and like that, everything. So a company will do all kinds of events. Now with the variety of uh, events that have entered India, with categories and different types of events that have entered India. So one single company can specialize in one particular type. So for example, Procan International, they are purely into marathons, they're into powerboat racing, they're into sport related event. So one company can purely specialize in that. In that. Uh, there are companies which are into award category like India Bike Week, this empty energy. So they create a lot of IPs. So there are different, so what happens is that uh, if you're a person who uh, like, if you're a person who is a sports enthusiast, you have a deep knowledge about sports, but you are equally passionate about event industry. Then it's not uh, compulsory that you get into weddings. It's not compulsory that you get into corporates. You can purely get into sport kind of event. So based on the interest that you have, based on the specialization that you've done, so you can get into that and create that as your forte, create that as a forte of your company and pursue that or be a part of that company that, and today uh, you have an option, like 15 years back, if I was searching a company which does only this kind of event, searching that kind of a company was almost uh, close to no. But today there are so many companies options that you guys can look up to. You can search for those category or kind of companies and apply with those companies. Like for example, DNA handles the IPL, they handle the ICL. So you are more uh, incl inclined towards that kind of leagues, then you can join that kind of a company. You are inclined towards Filmfare Awards or inclined towards uh, IFA Awards that happen, then you can join Biscraft. So every company has created their own portal, and their own specialization. You can join Encompass for if they want to create IPs or you want to join Event Capital, which has a lot of IPs could be the big boy toys or could be the entertainment show. So it depends, like you want, as a personal growth, you want to learn more about IPs, then you apply with that company. So that is one opportunity that you can look that today you are able to pursue something that you like under event. Second is educationist. Okay, so here what happens is that in all the other industry, whether it is a design industry, whether it's an engineering industry, whether it's a medical industry. So the formal education is gonna be the same. For example, medical. 
what do you do you do mbbs and then you do mba then you become a doctor but in case you don't want to become a doctor you can also pursue as a teacher because there is a huge requirement of teachers also in the industry so that they churn out enough doctors for the industry or for the society similarly in design industry similarly in uh, engineering industry not every person who passes out of btech or mtech becomes an engineer they also become educationists or they become teachers or they become professors with the rapid growth of the demand for event industry as such so what has happened is that in the last 10 years there are a lot of institutions who have started offering event management as a course so it could be what you are studying right now under igno or it could be different uh, institutions who are offering diploma post uh, post graduate diploma specialization in uh, graduation or masters etc so there is a huge opportunity three month course six month course one year course two year course so there is a huge demand for the people who have been in a part of the industry so what you can do is you can join event industry get some hands on experience for 5 10 years or 15 years if you feel that it is too uh, straining as an industry for you in terms of being outdoor so at that point of time you can come back and start training uh, people sharing your knowledge sharing your uh, information the way i am doing it right now so i pursue uh, a regular event uh, company i run an event company which has been performing for the last 10 years but at the same time my passion for teaching has always been around so i take some time off my busy schedule and record uh, such sessions for you so that it will be informative so you can also become educators for the industry rural penetration so with uh, the um, government of india which has been focusing more on rural for the last uh, Seven years or eight years, I would say. Um, what has happened is that uh, the digital India campaign has reached out to rural. Tier two, tier three cities, cities are seen as the new opportunity places. Urban places could be Bangalore, could be Mumbai, could be Delhi, or could be Chennai. They have kind of outgrown themselves to an extent, sometimes saturated. But the level of uh, events that are coming up at tier two and tier three cities is not because of uh, digital India alone, because the people spending power there has incre increased. Uh, because of television people have got so much of knowledge because of mobile phones and smartphones reaching there people have access to a lot of information so uh, there are a lot of concerts that are happening in tier 2 cities there are a lot of experiential events that are happening in tier 2 and tier 3 cities so a lot of companies who are who used to be only in metropolitan cities now have created branch offices or smaller offices in tier 2 and tier 3 cities and that also helps in another way so you don't have to leave uh, for example if you are coming from any of the tier 2 and tier 3 city you don't have to leave that city rather these companies are coming to that cities you can join them because they are hiring local man for local resources because in event the local uh, knowledge plays a very very important role and that would help here in terms of gaining more uh, employment digital india as i time and again i mentioned digital india plays a very very important role in uh, the event industry all the events today are marketed to different digital platforms could be facebook instagram or could be whatsapp etc and there are many softwares that have been developed for the event industry for example uh, softwares for registration for conferences for exhibitions and today um, a lot of scope has been given or importance has been given for virtual events so that if there is an event that is happening in bangalore or it is happening in uh, delhi a person sitting in uh, uh shimoga a person sitting in mangalore can also see that event even if he is not able to travel or it could be an event that is happening in us it could be beneficial for somebody from a very very uh, small town uh, in assam a small village as long as they have internet they can get access to it so and we as event companies can host such events virtual platforms or such uh, uh, technology are in place today thanks to uh, the campaign which has been initiated by our government next uh, opportunity which i would also like to mention is personalized event so what has happened today is that as you know wedding event what happened to weddings so uh, weddings were pre, um, mainly done by the family members itself like chacha uh, uncle aunt uh, and uh, brother sisters everybody used to come together and each one of uh, the you know family members to take up on a task and they used to execute it what used to happen is that everybody is busy in that work that nobody is enjoying the uh, wedding and nobody remembers what exactly happens this used to happen 20 years back but now things are uh, different people um, hire wedding planners and they take the complete control from designing your wedding card to designing your wedding dress to your makeup to your car decor to the hotel that you select the food the catering the decor the styling uh, your vacation and if it is a destination wedding how they will fly your visa tickets etc etc everything is managed by wedding planner 
the reason being the entire family is enjoying the entire process could be from the roka to the haldi ceremony etc etc whatever kind of ceremonies that we have so they are enjoying it completely being a part of it getting captured the entire thing so what has happened is that this has further evolved and people with good spending power have want even more detail so i have seen a few events for example uh, if i am organizing a, a movie night for my friends this 30 40 of them so what happens is that here the event companies will help you book a villa or an open space um, like a good resort space or something they will take the licensing of that movie they'll play that uh, all the ambience around that venue is created as per uh, the convenience of those 20 30 40 guests that have called for movie night so this the amount of personalization it has this too uh, a girl or a boy who are into relationship the uh, boy wants to propose uh, the girl uh, asking her for uh, marriage even that is designed and created or conceptualized by even companies today so to that level so personality events are also now uh, all of a sudden have come into mainstream um, as i told in my previous session that events like uh the uh, funeral uh, the after like for example if there is a big celebrity or a big uh, uh businessman who has passed away uh, after uh, the, the cremation and everything there is a sabha that is called and uh, even companies are hired today to arrange such sabhas and manage such sabhas so that the family members are uh, who are grieved at that such uh, deep uh, like in such who are in such bad situation because of somebody very close to their heart has passed away um, they can um, purely focus on you uh, know uh, talking to their family and friends uh, rather than looking at arrangements so even companies play a very important role as i said um, and i keep saying in my previous session from the time you plan your birth so baby shower to funeral even companies are there everywhere for every occasion of your life global platforms that's another opportunity so um, the india trade fair that happens in london or uh, could be uh, the davos summit that happens in switzerland and many other so india uh, really leading at the global uh, food front has uh, put our country into a very important spot every country is watching india now and india is participating extensively in most of the events that are happening across the world from our it companies or from our multinationals could be tata mahindras and everybody who have a global presence uh, are participating in events and uh, other conferences or exhibitions that are happening across the world so what has happened is that all of a sudden everybody are seeing it india as a spending power is coming and doing events there so we are collaborating with a lot of event companies abroad and doing such events in fact destination wedding weddings have picked up on an average 50% to 60% year on year um companies that uh, countries that we have never heard of could be malta could be anywhere look at uh, the recent weddings of uh, uh, virat kohli uh, and anushka that happened uh, deepika padukone and ranveer that happened at uh, the you know italy and many other so a lot of exotic destinations have opened up for india uh, and people are looking up because the celebrities are getting married there and now people also want to go there get married so all of a sudden we are a preferred country amongst the global uh, our uh, destinations sports event time and again i have uh, discussed and i have always said uh, with the coming of nba it could be power boat uh, race or could be many other rugby events or could be a uh, baseball which has come to india has opened doors to many global sporting companies um, setting up their offices in india opening up uh, newer event avenues creating newer uh, event opportunities uh, collaborating with event companies to create such uh, championship or uh, uh, could be races including for example uh, both international circuit which was created 6 7 years back we had one round of formula 1 or one or two rounds of formula 1 that happened post that truck racing prima truck racing also came to india uh, and that was like uh, the prima was a sponsor of that uh, so the truck racing that happened at the both international circuit so these were things which we like 15 years back i never heard of truck racing happening in india formula 1 nba oh my god this is like something uh i'm sure you guys are entering the event industry at a very very uh good time actually uh, with so many options uh, which is available today um for you to choose from and make your uh, specialization these are some of the images of uh, the uh, kind of events so the first image you see the nb india games that happened last year uh, the second image on the right hand side you see of a virtual conference that is happening where around 1000 to 2000 people are attending across the world giving you the feel of actual conference and just below is the image of a power boat racing so um 
one point that I forgot to mention is the virtual events. With uh, accessibility to technology becoming much faster and much more feasible, so virtual events has picked up uh, really well. So if there is a conference that is happening in somewhere in Las Vegas or it is happening in San Francisco, and uh, due to some time constraint or you know due to financial constraint, if somebody is not able to travel, so uh, those conference companies have created a digital version of it where you can attend those conferences live as a small inch. Like if you have to go to San Francisco, attend that event and come back, it's going to cost you not less than two to three lakh rupees. But the same thing can be attended today by paying just ten thousand rupees as a digital uh, event ticket and you attend that. So things uh, have evolved. So by paying ten thousand, you're saving around two and a half lakh rupees of going in. Yes, uh, the experience is going to be completely different when you're there in person, but uh, at times when situations don't permit, and uh, and if there are many such events happening throughout the year, you can't keep going to every event and spend like 30, 40, 50 lakhs a year, right? So what we do is we attend few of this online and few wherever it's possible, we attend in person. So this has opened up a big opportunity area for a lot of companies to create virtual platforms, to create virtual event companies. It could be even because there is an event that we want to do in India, and that is a speaker who's from a different country, could be from Finland or could be from uh, anywhere, could be from Antarctica, as long as he's got an internet connection and in case he's not able to travel, they can do it online. So that's the advantage technology has got today. And a lot of uh, technology companies are uh, kind of uh, focusing on that. So with this, um, I come to an end of uh, our uh, session um, that is uh, scope, uh, growth and scope of uh, event industry. Um, I'm sure uh, this has given you a clear picture as to what our industry can do and what it has been doing for uh, uh, so many years. Um, companies like uh, Wiscraft and many other who have uh, been there for, I would say, more than 30 years, uh, they have seen uh, how uh, this industry has grown more than what I have. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I have seen this industry for the last 15 years and this there has been a tremendous growth. What you made is the right choice. Just that I would um, suggest that you go and do a little more research on uh, the points that I mentioned today so that it gives you a clear insight while you go through the entire course, identify the specialization that matches your interest. Um, it could be outside the industry also. Make that your specialization, make that your forte and pursue that. And I'm sure um, any kind of industry that you join, if you're doing it with a lot of uh, uh, passion and uh, hard work, automatically, uh, whether it, even if there are 1,000 companies already operating, we'll still excel in that. That's my message. Thank you and have a good day.